All right, welcome to a whole new episode of the Central Florida High School Scoreboard Show. I'm Dan LaForest. That is Balin Trujillo back in the car. Balin, first round of playoffs is over, my man. It is, and uh, not many upsets. I'll tell you, there might might be some minor upsets. Uh, I know there's one in Central Florida we're going to talk about a little bit, but overall, I think pretty much all the favorite teams won, and they're advanced, and a lot of sets of a lot of rematches this week, which I know we're all excited about, several rematches. So, oh, yeah. Um, Dan, I mean, this is this is it, man. Every week it gets shorter and shorter. Now we're only guaranteed four weeks left of football, and a lot of teams are only guaranteed yeah. one more. So um, let's get into it, Dan. I'm excited about this one. No, no doubt about it, which includes a championship game. We're going to talk about it here in a minute. Um, but, yeah, this is going to be a shortened version of the Central Florida High School Scoreboard Show, um, and it's going to get – to a point where this thing continues to get even more discussion. But you know what? Let's fly with it, Balin. Let's start with the SSAA State Championship Masters Academy. Coach Kruzek. They the Eagles take care of business. They beat Westminster Academy 34 to 27 to capture the SSAC state championship game. Yeah, I'm so glad for Masters Academy. Again, we've had them ranked in our top five from day one, and they've proven themselves, and uh, they got their state championship. I know Garrett Kruzik brought in an all-star cast, and they had a lot of good key pieces coming back from last year's Masters team that didn't live up to all the hype, and my goodness, they, they've rolled. And when you have an offensive coordinator like Coach Kruzik, who's coached at the highest level, played at the highest level, you know, you're going to probably put yourself in a great position to win a lot of games. And this is what happened with Masters, and Masters, and We lost Balin for a minute there, but he's back. Uh, Balin, let's move on. The SSA, the SSAA, excuse me, I've got that wrong. It's the Sunshine State Athletic Association now. How about Mount Dora Christian? The Bulldogs take care of St. Stephen's 28-7. to Coach Colby Tackett comes back and in one year has done a great job with Mount Dora Christian. Yeah, man, I'm so excited about Mount Dora. They finally got over the hump and they got a championship under their belt now. And, man, that's, that's some big stuff for them, but – Going back to the Masters thing, I know I got cut off here. You know, Jackson Stetcher, the, the eighth grader, led them to a state title. I think that's that should not be overlooked. And I'm, you know, proud for for what they've done and what he's done for that program. And Nazir is another special talent that led them to that point. But great job to handling two stud quarterbacks to help them win a state title and bring another championship back to Masters. So great job, Masters. And then Mount Dora Christian, congratulations. You finally got over the hump and you got yourself a ring. You know, Balin, let's talk about that for a minute. We, we mentioned, you know, Jackson uh, Stetcher is a, is an eighth grader. How significant is it for him and his development to have that kind of exposure so early on? It's massive, especially with how recruiting is now and the transfer portal and all that. But it's huge, especially for a kid like Jackson, because the, the way the private school works, you know, kids are able to play varsity as eighth graders. And you, you get a head start on all these guys. Most guys don't see varsity starting until their sophomore, junior year. He's already at that level as an eighth grader. So, and then to have that confidence to win a state championship, he hasn't even touched high school yet. So, my goodness, you talk about the momentum he's going to have in his career, especially with recruiting, is off the charts. And, of course, he's with a guy like Garrett Kruzik and myself as his trainer. You know, he's going to have a plenty of opportunities, but this is such a great opportunity, and not many eighth graders can say they led a team to a state title. Yeah, no doubt about it. All right, let's get into some of these. The 1S regions actually had a bye week last week because they have smaller regions. So let's get back to our local teams. Halifax Academy goes to Melbourne Central Catholic for their matchup Friday night. Yeah, there was not even a, you know, I don't think it's going to be a close contest. I think Melbourne Central Catholic is going to handle business over Halifax. They've already got waxed uh, earlier in the season by this team and uh, and also Holy Trinity. So I don't see Halifax doing many of anything in this game, but they did have a great season. Hats off to them. I think it was their most wins in, in a long, over a decade or maybe program history. I'm not sure about that stat, but uh, great season then, but I think it ended Friday night. Yeah, no doubt about it. Coach Bell's done a wonderful job there. Holy Trinity travels to Ocala to take on Coach John Brantley and Trinity Catholic. Yeah, we broke this game down last week. You know, don't let that record fool you. Three and seven for Trinity Catholic up in Ocala. Uh, there, I still think they're the favorite team to win this game. You know, you hold Brogan McNabb uh, to, to, you know, contain him, and you probably win this game by a landslide. So it's going to be interesting to see how Trinity, uh, you know, handles 
handles Brogan, but at the same time, Holy Trinity has an opportunity to continue this great season that they've had as well. So it's going to be an interesting matchup, but I do think the better team here is Trinity Catholic, just, you know, regardless of record. And we move on to 1M Region 1. University Christian Jacksonville uh, plays at Trinity Christian in Jacks, but uh, OCP, outstanding season, you know, one loss. They're going to host Providence out of Jacksonville this Friday night. Yeah, the only two games I really remember about Providence is one of them earlier in the year they played Masters Academy uh, in a close matchup there. So, you know, and another one is another Jacksonville team school that uh, that I forget the name, but I think they're pretty good. I think Providence has a couple guys going Division One as well, but I do like OCP here. I think OCP does take care of business over Providence, but regardless of who wins or loses this game, their season's over next week against Trinity Christian. But let a, a playoff win is nothing to take life. No, and the Anderson, the Anderson boys are doing really good. They had, had a great season for OCP in that running game, so it's going to be exciting to see how they control the clock. All right, we're in the 2S Region 2. Atlantic Port Orange goes up to Bradford to take on the Tornadoes, and it doesn't fare very well for the Sharks, 42 to nothing. Yeah, great season for Atlantic. The running back we talked about a little bit last week, he's a surprise talent in Central Florida. But, yeah, Bradford was, was way too much, and regardless, it's all setting up for a big matchup against Coco later down the road, and either one of these teams aren't ready for that that test. So, But great job to Atlantic, great season, but uh, Bradford showed that they're the better team, and they play East Side this week. No doubt about it. And, you know, Coach Squatty Bell and, and, and the Sharks, outstanding season, district champions, great job, guys. Now, the rest of this bracket is out of our area, but this is going to end up sizing up here in a few weeks because we know who's on the other side of that 2S bracket in Coco. So Eastside takes care of Palaka, 28 to 27. Yuli beats Keystone Heights, 36 to 10. And Baker County takes care of Baldwin, 38 to 21. That sets up this Friday night. Eastside and Gainesville heads over to Bradford to take on the Tornadoes. Baker County heads to Yuli, and that's going to set into 2S Region 3, where the Coco Tigers took care of business against Eustace, 54 to 7, Balin. We lost your audio, Balin. Sorry about that. I was just getting ready for my quarterback training here in the rain. But uh, now uh, Brady Hart's going to have another special season in the postseason. Uh, I don't think there's a team that matches up with Coco. Eustace, probably the easiest team they've faced all year, honestly, and they happen to be in the playoffs. Uh, I believe half the team was over by halftime. So, um, you know, great season to Eustace. I mean, we, last year we weren't even talking about it. So the fact that we were even playing a team like Coco was great. Uh, but no team in this region or any of the region, 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 can handle Coco right now. Yeah, no doubt. And and again, congratulations to the Panthers and Coach Coach Frank Scott. Uh, great season over there with Eustace. How about Donelland, 5C, takes care of Hudson, 28-6. to six. Yeah, those are Moving one of those on. little weird upsets that might have happened. But uh, Donelland's a proven team, and I think Hudson had a great year, but they proved uh, they've been here before. So it's going to set up, a, I would say, interesting first quarter against Coco. But that, look for that game to be 21+. plus. Yeah, Donellan travels to Coco this Friday night. And again, you know, Coco's just stout. And uh, that's going to be tough for for a travel and and to play the Coco Tigers. Moving on, uh, South Sumter takes care of Nature's Coast 48-6. to And Titusville in a rematch of Palm Bay, the Terriers take care of it 13-7. to That Great sets job. up. Yeah. yeah, so that sets up South Sumter hosting Titusville Friday night. Yeah, it's going to set up yeah. – this whole thing is setting up for a rematch between South Sumter and Coco, to be honest with you. But Titusville, they're in the second round of the playoffs. What a what a crazy season they're having. Ten and one, right? Their only loss was to Coco. I mean, it's unbelievable what those guys are doing in the turnaround that they're having. And uh, what a great season. You know, it takes a couple of these to become a great program, but what a great season uh, this team is having. And, uh, man, it would be crazy if they could pull off a crazy upset against South Sumter. I don't see it happening. Uh, but, man, what a great season regardless. But at the end of the day, I think we're going to see Coco and South Sumter uh, fighting for that regional championship. But, you know, again, Titusville had a great has had a great season. We've been talking about the strength of Brevard. Bard County teams, and now they're being tested. So what a way to prove that is to knock off South Sumter and get that rematch with Coco. All right, 2M Region 1, 
And again, you know, this is that Jacksonville bracket with Bishop Moore sitting in there. But Reigns takes care of Andrew Jackson, 42 to 2. Bowles takes care of Bishop Kenny, 45 to 14. That sets up number one Reigns hosting Bowles. That's a huge game, Balin. Yeah, it's a huge game. I think that Reigns is going to take this. They are the better team here. Bowles historically has done favorable in this region and have represented the state title game several years, uh, winning several state championships, but I don't think it's their year this year. I think Reigns has an opportunity to make some noise in this region for 2M Region 1. Um, but, yeah, I think that's going to be probably the better game of the two that we're going to talk about here. But, yeah, Reigns, I think they're the better team here. Yeah, no doubt about it. Riverside takes care of Episcopal, 49-7. to And Bishop Moore, I was at that game Friday night. They take care of Ed White, 42-22, to Balin. Yeah, it sets up a great, you know, regional semifinal, but I think this is where Bishop Moore's run ends. I do think they do not beat a Riverside, even though I could see this potentially. But, you know, they've won, I believe, what, eight straight now, Dan? I mean, this is a team that started off 0-3 and, and have continued to roll. Uh, but right now, I think this is where the, the Cinderella story may end. I hope it doesn't. Uh, but I just think that Riverside, you know, as a two seed, has, has proven themselves. And if you look at their schedule, you know, they've had some pretty good game and pretty good wins. So uh, not saying that Bishmore hasn't, uh, but I just think Riverside may be the better team here. Uh, but I would love to see the upset here, Dan. I think if this is the game Bishop Moore is going to win, I love the youth. I love the talent Bishop Moore has on offense and defense. And they played. They rose up, man. I tell you, Ed White's a talented team. I saw a lot of great play. Bjorn Jurgensen had an amazing game, not only throwing the ball, but running the ball. They did not account for him. Uh, Trenton Gummer had another interception for, for the defense. But we saw a lot of guys playing really well. And uh, I think Bishop Moore has that opportunity to, to take Riverside out and advance to that region. But uh, after the game, I had a great conversation with Coach Matt Hedrick, the head coach for Bishop Moore. And we're going to take a look. All right, here with Coach Matt Hedrick of Bishop Moore. Coach, big win over Ed White, 42-22. to 22. It seems like this entire season has been a progression. You know, the Hornets have just gotten better and better each week. Let's talk about the game tonight. Yeah, you know, we got off to a really good start, which was important. We're at home. We got a good football team, and uh, I thought we got off to a really good start and put ourselves in a position to be successful. Struggled a little bit, obviously, in the third quarter after a big first half, but the guys responded well, and, and again, it's a, it's a big playoff victory, so we're happy with it. You know, it seems like your offense continues to progress. Bjorn Jurgensen has really, really done a good job managing that offense all season long. He has. Bjorn's been a great leader for us. He's gotten better and better as the season's gone along. Our passing game's gotten a lot better, and our O-line's a big part of that, so you know, we're really proud of those guys. And, we showed some balance tonight. I thought we ran the ball pretty well, certainly at times, and, and definitely there towards the end of the game. So, you know, everybody's doing their part. I think it's, uh, it's, it's a really good opportunity for us to see if we can advance. Defensively, it seems like guys just keep making plays. Such a young group of, of, of young men. But tell us about the discipline of that defense because it seems like every play, they're right in the middle of it. Yeah, we talk about discipline all the time, and quite honestly, we struggle with it at times. Like you said, we're a young team, and we got a lot of moving parts. But, you know, the guys are working really hard, and they run to the football, and they're pr pretty opportunistic, and that's what it's all about. You know, it's sort of a, you know, bend but don't break mentality sometimes and make the guys, make the other team snap it one more time and stay in the football game that way. So they did a good job of that. You're on to the second round, have to travel over to Sarasota to play Riverview. What do you tell your team to get ready? Oh, we just lost the light. I've got Riverside, it. Riverside, Jacksonville. Riverside, Jacksonville. Oh, I'm sorry, Jacksonville. Uh, you know, it's just a great opportunity. They're a different kind of football team. They run a ton of spread, a ton of empty, so it's going to be a real challenge for us in space. It's going to be a challenge for our secondary, for our pass rush. But, again, I mean, these football teams are all really good. You get in the playoffs in the state of Florida. We've been there a lot before, fortunately, and we know what it's like. And you got to play really good for two and a half hours, and that's the, that's the name of the game. All right, good luck this week. Thanks, Dan. I appreciate it. All right, welcome back to the Central Florida High School Scoreboard Show. I'm Dan LaForest. That is Balin Trujillo. And Balin, we're right into 3S Region 1, Middleburg, loses to St. Augustine 52-14. to They move on. That we is move probably on to... the best team. Go ahead. I... No, I was saying, in my opinion, that's probably the best team in that region is St. Augustine. They have, again, one of the best quarterbacks we've talked about uh, previous. Uh, his dad's a, a really big-known quarterback trainer up in Jacksonville. But that kid right there, if you haven't seen St. Augustine in that, in that type of talent, uh, you might want to look at it. So 
they have a pretty good shot in this 3S region, Dan. I, I believe they can give a run for their money, especially when it comes later down the road when it, we're talking about mainland. So it's going to be interesting. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a lot of great matchups here. Uh, Pine Forest takes care – or actually, Escambia knocks off Pine Forest 15-7. to Escambia moves on. That sets up in a matchup. Now, that's a heck of a drive, too. That's a cola to St. Augustine where Escambia has to take on the Hornets. Yeah, no doubt about it, man. No doubt. All right, so how about Matanzas? They had to travel to Tally this past weekend. It did not turn out very well with the Pirates. 49 to nothing, Lincoln moves on. Yeah, we talked about it last week. I even said in, in, in our predictions as we're going through the brackets, you know, great season Matanzas, but this is as far as you're going to go. But it's still a, a cool thing to see them in a playoff bracket because a couple years ago they were everybody's homecoming team. So great job to Matanzas in the season that they had. You know, they're only going to go up from here. Now here's the standard. So now – the team coming up behind this team is like, hey, we made it to the playoffs. We had a really good season. Now this is what we're expecting now moving forward from a program standpoint. So it's going to be interesting to see how they regroup and reload next year. But what a great season again for Matanzas. The fact that they're even in the playoffs and we're talking about them right now in, in November is a great thing for that program. No doubt about it. Matt Force has done a wonderful job the last few years that he's been at the program. He's got him in the playoffs, and he's got a lot of young talent coming back next year. So it's going to be exciting to be talking about them when we get into uh, the fall. But uh, Choctahatchee takes care of business over Columbia, 37-14. to 14. They move on. They're going to play uh, Lincoln uh, this Friday night. Yeah, like I said, uh, Lincoln is going to – I have a feeling it's going to be Lincoln and St. Augustine in the regional final. Uh, but this could be a, a scary game for Lincoln. This could be a trap game, uh, an upset, what we'd call it. But – uh, I, I do like what Lincoln's doing over there. I know some of their coaches on their coaching staff, and they have a really good, solid program over there. Run really well every single year. Um, look for them to escape uh, this team coming up on Friday, but I believe it's going to be St. Augustine and Lincoln, and we're going to see a, a battle of two great quarterbacks, and probably St. Augustine's going to take it in this region. But great football to be played in this region, but unfortunately our Central Florida team at Tangents is out, so we probably won't be talking about them much longer. Yeah, at least still further on down the road, but I disagree. I think Coach Beasley and uh, Choctahatchee are the great big Indian. They're going to take care of business and move on. To, and, and you know, we potentially and, – and I'll tell you, Balin, that's a place – that's on my bucket list. I want to go to Choctaw and watch a home game down there because I heard it's lights out. Well, take me there, All right, man. let's move on to 3S Region 3 in Mainland. Balin, we talked about this. Lake Mary was a wake-up call for them. They absolutely blank satellite 62 to nothing. Mainland is the best team in 3S. There's not even a question about it. Yes, I know they got spanked by Lake Mary, uh, but that was what they needed. Honestly, I think they were getting a little big-headed. I feel like the, the, the just the era around the program and some of the coaching, you know, it was just a little cockiness. But they got humbled real quick, and they, you know, they have the talent to beat every team. They even have the talent to beat Lake Mary. It's just they got spanked, and so now you're starting to see the trickle-down effect of these guys taking it serious. And like I said, the three S is is mainland to lose. So it's we talk about the Alabamas of the world every year. It's their is their year to lose. You know, it's up to them to lose, right? It's up to mainland. The, the only competition that they have, honestly, is themselves. So if they continue to do what they're doing, if DJ Murray keeps doing what he's doing, and if LJ McCray <laughs> continues to scare people uh, in the backfield, look for this team to blow out everybody in this whole entire region, and that includes Rockledge. I do not think Rockledge is going to get past mainland this week. I think it's going to get ugly. Uh, great job for Rockledge even to be in this position. You know, early on in, in the playoff segment, you know, I did say Rockledge was going to win, but it's still a shocker, right? Because it's just, they're just not having the year that we're used to seeing. But look for Mainland to put it on them uh, this Friday night. Yeah, and talking about Rockledge, they take care of the number four seed, Jensen Beach, 19-16. to 16. A lot of questions about Rockledge, but now they find themselves in that seat, going to Daytona right now to play the Mainland Bucks, And a lot of people think that Rockledge has a shot here, Balin. Yeah, because they're going based off history. History shows that Rockledge is always a powerhouse, and they still are. They're still a name to be reckoned with over there on the East Coast. But they're not the same Rockledge team. A lot of those their top talent went to Coco, which is why they're dominating, and they're just rebuilding. You know, they have a lot of young talent, which talk about Rockledge, and, and even next year they might be a scary team. But right now, as it stands, playing a bunch of sophomores and maybe some key injuries, there's no way possible this team escapes mainland. I just don't see it happening, and I, I just love how the talent that mainland has and the coaching, and uh, it, it'll be interesting, but I, you ain't going to catch that prediction from me. It's going to be mainland all the way. 
No, I agree. It's going to be two great coaching staffs going up against each other. It's going to come down to the Jimmys and Joes. How about O'Galley? 62-22, to 22, take out Merritt Island. This is the team that we need to really circle. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. I wasn't sold on them early. I thought their schedule was pretty favorable for them. You know, this was a, a solid football team, a couple different transfers coming in. They talked a lot of smack in the Coco. We got spanked. But you know what? They responded. Their only loss is to Coco. Again, line up with anybody. I think Coco beats anybody in Central Florida. So th- that one loss isn't bad, just like Titusville. You know, like it is what it is. But at the end of the day, you galley might be a scary team to play right now. That they're rolling at the right time, and you can find them potentially in the, the regional final versus Mainland, and they could probably match up skill wise. I still think Mainland's the better team, but man, uh, shoot, you galley, oh galley, the you galley, whatever galley, they're rolling right now, baby, and I like them, man. I like them for the win this week against Sea Breeze and a blowout that sets up a good matchup with Mainland. Yeah, and again, that might be a game we may want to take a look at actually visiting. But, you know, bringing up Sebring, Sebring takes care of Fort Pierce Westwood 48 to nothing to move on. They play O'Galley this Friday night. Yeah, I just said the prediction. O'Galley wins in blowout fashion in my prediction. All right, so let's move on. 3M Region 1, Edgewater takes care of First Coast out of Jacksonville 37 to 6. Game was over at halftime. Now they're prepared for the showdown in the O-Town. We talk about the hometown showdown between Haggerty and Oviedo. Nothing like the Edgewater-Jones game, baby. And I'm going to be there Friday night. So you best believe buckle up. But Edgewater got a nice little warm-up, let's say pre-game, like we would do on Thursdays for warm-up games to kind of feel it. They got that on the first run of the playoffs. Now they're ready to roll against Jones. And let's talk about that Jones game now. All right, well, I was about to say, slow your roll there, Valen, because Jones took care of Oviedo over in Oviedo, 33-7. to That sets up a rematch. Edgewater-Jones. Edgewater won this game a few weeks ago. But is this the same Jones team they played? No, I mean, it is and it's not. So it is because we know the, the magnitude of that football game. It, Jones definitely wanted to win. Edgewater punched him in the mouth. They took advantage over five turnovers. Right, so any game like that, we talked about the Mander Lake Mary game, but now we talk about the Jones Edgewater game with turnovers. Do they do that again? That's going to be tough to beat a good team twice. And Jones, right now, with I believe seven straight wins in blowout fashion, this is not the team to play with in the playoffs. I believe the winner of this football game will advance to the state title game. They're going to roll through all the Tampa teams, they don't see competition like Edgewater and Jones does every week. So look for this to be a a somewhat state title game on this Friday night at Edgewater. And I love the matchup. And like you said, they took care of Oviedo. Oviedo is a solid football team. They have a great quarterback in Jackson Latour. Coach O does not get blown out often. But guess what? There are two marks on his his resume, and both are blowouts to Jones High School in the playoffs. So Jones is not a team to, to take lightly. And I love this matchup, Dan. I am so looking forward to Coach Duke versus Coach Will this Friday night, baby. And just trust me, be ready to look at your phone because there's going to be a lot of scoring updates in this one. You know, it's going to be an exciting game. But let's remember, last year we're in the same boat, right? Edgewater takes care of the business during the regular season. Jones beats them, knocks them off, ruins their undefeated season. Right now they're undefeated again. This is a significant game that everybody in the state of Florida is going to be watching. All right, let's move on. Armwood. Dan, Dan, Dan. new team with a new quarterback. That's all I'm going to say about the Edgewater team. They have a new quarterback at the helm, and I believe Michael Clayton is the real deal. I'm telling you, this is a different football team. Last year, if Michael plays, I don't know if it's changed the result, but the score might have been closer. So now that Michael's there, look for Edgewater. Do really good in the pass game. Keep it very balanced. But like I said, Jones is scary, brother. Jones is scary. All right, let's talk about that Tampa region. Tampa or uh, Armwood takes care of Wharton 20 to 14, a little bit closer than what we thought, Balin. Yeah, Armwood's battle tested, man. If you look at their schedule, they have won some pretty close matchups. They win when it's close, and that matters when we talk about postseason. Armwood finds a way to win. That's how you get it done. That's how you win championships. You got good teams find a way to win. The Patriots, when Tom Brady was at the helm, they weren't blowing everybody out, but they found a way to win. Armwood's one of those sneaky teams. They have always been in a state title contention. If you drive by their stadium on I-4 on the way to USF or even to Clearwater, 
you will see all the state championship and the years and all the regional championships and district championships all posted around the entire school. You can't miss it on I-4, Dan. They know, they know how to win football games. Coach Davis is a solid coach. He wins, he wins, he wins. And they got it done again Friday night. No, oh, and Tampa Bay Tech takes care of Fletcher, man. 51-34. to 34. That sets up that rematch. Armwood won this during the regular season over Tampa Bay Tech. Yeah, look for the same result here, Dan. Tampa Tech goes down. It will be Armwood versus the winner of Jones and Edgewater. And I don't care who it is. It could be Tampa Tech. None of those teams are getting past our Central Florida teams. We will have a Central Florida representative in this classification, in my opinion, Dan. And it's going to be Jones. All right, Baylin, do we get a prediction out of Edgewater Jones? Or are you holding off on this? <laughs> you know what? Gosh, I want Jones to win. But I do believe this is Edgewater's special season. So, uh, you can read between the lines, but I, I can't go against Coach Will, but Edgewater, this is the year for them, and they they got to get it done. All right, we'll keep those receipts, man. Let's move on. 4S Region 2, Lakeland takes care of Mitchell, 49-17. to Lakeland, they're, they're, you know, they're the team to beat, you know, if, as far as from that standpoint, you know, I don't see them getting much of a hiccup until they see an Edgewater or Jones. Um, but, yeah, Lakeland is, is, is just rolling right now. No, I listen, Lakeland's the champion until they're not, right? Um, Winter Haven falls to Bartow. Bartow did a wonderful job. I, I tell you, Bartow's sitting really good, but they win seven to nothing. Bartow, old Polk County showdown. Bartow goes to Lakeland. I have no idea, Dan, why I was so hype on the Edgewater Jones. I have no idea why I even said that. There's no way they these teams play each other. Uh, I was just saying, you know, from a Lakeland standpoint, they're the standard. You know, I'm very curious to see a rematch with Lake Mineola later down the road because I do believe Lake Mineola is going to reach the uh, the regional final. Uh, but, yeah, Bartow, what a special season they're having. You know, they kind of went in a little slump there after starting off so hot. They got blasted by Lakeland early in the year. This is a rematch game. I don't see it going any other way besides Lakeland's way. Uh, but great season for Bartow. They have a new a new head coach, and those guys are yeah, finding Yeah, Tyler Eden's well. done a great job in his first yeah. year, Balin. Yeah, I believe it. So, but I just don't think they get past Lakeland. Bartow's uh, season ends Friday night, but uh, but what a good year! I mean, they get a first round, uh, you know, escape, and now they got to face Lakeland. So good luck. All right, number two seeded Lake Mineola takes care of business against number seven Haines City, thirty-five to sixteen. Our guy Hassani Harper said he didn't believe Haines City had enough to play against Lake Mineola, and he was right. Yeah, I believe Lake Mineola is a scary team. We will see a rematch, Lake Lake Mineola and Lakeland. Uh, for the regional championship, I believe so, in two weeks. I believe Lake Mineola will take care of Wiregrass. Now, Wiregrass has one of the best quarterbacks in the entire state. I train him. Luke Knight, the Army commit. They take care of Springstead. This sets up a pretty good matchup from a quarterback and offensive standpoint. I love Lake Mineola's offense. I love their offensive line. My goodness, as I was a quarterback, I'd love to stand behind those guys. Uh, obviously, Coach Banks has a well, well-coached well defense every single year. He's been in the state title game. Wiregrass Ranch has not in recent years, so that might be the difference maker of being in the stage like this. Uh, but Wiregrass Ranch has a quarterback that has won a state title when he was at Jesuit as a sophomore. So look for this kid, Luke Knight, again. That I, th- I believe he's the number three passer in the entire state of Florida right now. He's a D1 Army commit, uh, but I just love Lake Mineola and what they got going on. I think they're just too talented up front, and I believe they take care of business, and we will get that rematch with Lakeland. Yeah, no doubt about it. I think Wiregrass Ranch, you, you, you brought up uh, Luke Knight. Luke Knight is one of the top passers in the state of Florida, and Lake Mineola is going to have a hard time slowing down that passing attack of Wiregrass Ranch. All right, let's move on to 4S Region 3. Osceola falls to Treasure Coast 49-17. to I said this was a sleeper team, Dan. I was wrong. I will say it. They got completely thrashed by Treasure Coast, and it was uglier than the first time they played. You talk about rematches. This was a rematch Osceola clearly did not want to see anytime soon. Treasure Coast is the real deal. We also forget that Treasure Coast also beat Seminole, which is the real deal. So this is no slouch over team. They punched them in the mouth. They're moving on to the next round, and unfortunately one of our Central Florida teams gets blown out as in a Molly Watt fashion in a powerhouse like Osceola. No, and this is another rematch, Vero Beach, Treasure Coast. And, uh, you know, Treasure Coast has been rolling. You know, we talked about them last season. They were 5-5, five and five, but they had lost to some amazing talent. They have turned that corner this year, and I think they're going to be tough for Vero Beach to take down. Uh, let's talk about that Vero Beach, though. Heritage, Palm Bay, they lose to Vero Beach 28-17 to, to, to get that matchup between Vero and, and Treasure Coast. 
Yeah, Heritage is one of the teams you really like, Dan. You thought they were they were better than what they showed against Oviedo, and, and Oviedo got the win. But you said this team is legit, and unfortunately they ran into a team loaded with Division One talent, a quarterback that's committed to SMU. This is no slouch over team. Vero Beach is a solid football team, and what a great season. Regardless of the outcome, Heritage had a phenomenal year. They won their district. They're still championship. They're still champions. Unfortunately, they ain't going to be state champions, but – Man, Vero Beach and Treasure Coast, that's going to be another heavy hitter in the second round of the playoffs, Dan. This this region, nope. you got to earn everything, and this is, this is a big one. Yeah, and Orange City University, their magical season continues with Coach Justin Roberts. 42 to nothing over New Smyrna Beach. The Cudas go down. Cudas go down. They start off, what, I believe 5 or 6-0, and oh, and we said it, Dan. Their schedule was weak. We love talking about them, but every time they played a big opponent, they get spanked. So, you know, this was another situation like that. They don't even score. They don't even get close to scoring in this one, Dan. So, <clears throat> you know what? Great momentum for University of Orange City because guess what? Now they find themselves in a rematch with DeLand. And guess what happened last time they played each other? DeLand and, completely Yeah, and, and here's the thing, right? We talked about DeLand Spruce Creek. It was a rematch. DeLand wins 35-25, but it was close all the way to the end. Yep, DeLand, they squeaked it out. But guess what? Now they got University of Orange City. Now or University is the higher seed here, but I believe DeLand's the better team here. And I believe that the same result's going to happen. They only held University to three points. Three points, Dan, the first time they played each other. So if the DeLand defense continues to do what they're doing, I don't see any problems here. I think DeLand with TJ Moore, that kid is unbelievably talented. With Rick, with Darlington, I don't ever bet against Darlington. You already know as an Apopka guy, you don't bet against Darlington in the playoffs. Watch the Lance somehow, some way, find themselves in a Final Four situation because he's been there before. So this could be a weird little deal here because I love the way they're they're set up. They got to beat University, which I think they will, and then an upset over Treasure Coast or Vero Beach sets them right in the Final Four. Dan, I love Rick Darlington and Deland here, and I think they take care of business against the higher seed University Orange City, just like they did in the regular season. So two points I'm gonna make about this game. Number one, Pine Ridge fires their head coach, Eric Pointer, which was ridiculous in my opinion. Dumbest okay. thing I've ever heard. Dumbest thing I've ever heard. Straight up. And he didn't want but to. Guess where, guess where Coach Pointer ended up this week? Wait. He's at the land. Nah, don't even. Don't do that. He's at the land. You're telling me that Pointer will be on the sideline at the land versus University of Orange City. Now, get, now he, here's the other curve to this to this game. Where what? are they playing the game, Balin? Do you know where they're playing the game? Don't tell me it's at, it's at Pine Ridge's field. Please do not say that. Oh, no, no, no. It's at New Smyrna Beach because Orange City University doesn't have the stadium to facilitate a playoff game, and they won't play at the land. So they're playing. Both of them are going to New Smyrna Beach. <laughs> hey, <coughs> great. You know what? Hats off the pointer. Uh, he won in this situation because you know what? Oh, big time. Pine Ridge, they screwed up. They had a good guy. They had a good year, man. We were taught, I believe they started off unbeaten for a while there. And it's like, whoa, where did Pine Ridge come up? Of course, they lost some some big games. But according to Pointer's po post on Twitter, which he took down, I believe he wanted to keep it professional. But at the end of the day, he did not want to leave. He wanted to be at Pine Ridge. It's going to be hard to get a guy like that in a, in a, in a program like that. They brought life to that program. Now they're going to go right back to, I'm going to be, I'm going to be honest, below average. So, you know, great job to Pointer. You won. I'm telling you, you won. Ride this tail. You're going to be under a good coach. Learn from him and keep moving forward, baby, because they they, they did you wrong. I'll say it first. I, I don't disagree. Listen, Coach Pointer has been around the block. He's been at Edgewater. He's been at a number of programs. He was at DeLand before, years ago. Yeah, he was at uh, – and, and he was recently at Lake Howell. At, uh, at Lake Howell for a long time, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. And to get his first coaching opportunity, you're right. He did a wonderful job at Pine Ridge. So we we wish Pine Ridge all the luck in the world. All right, let's get on to 4M Region 1, and let's talk about the game. Lake Mary, who's a number one seed, had to go to Boone, who's a number eight seed. And Boone was beating them until about, what, a minute and 20 seconds left in the game? Lake Mary yes. comes out 42 to 38. Great teams win big games, no matter what it is. And you know what? Boone is the perfect example on why everyone loves high school football. They are the perfect example. Why? Because nobody gave them a chance to win this game. They thought it was going to be a molly -wop. I even called it a molly -wop. I said the only boo that's going to happen that night is the boos from the fans because how many times Lake Mary was going to see the end zone. 
Now that did happen, Dan. Noah still had a six-touchdown performance with five touchdown passes and a rushing touchdown, so there was a lot of scoring, but Boone was doing the exact same thing. So what a match this was. I will give my hat. I Look, I'm taking my hat off. I take my hat off to Andy Johnson, Coach Walters, you know, their, their quarterback coach over there, uh, Coach O'Connell. I Those guys had the perfect game plan against Lake Mary, and what happened? They fumbled the bag, just like they fumbled the season. They had it right there in front of them, Dan. If they hand the ball off, they probably win the game out, run the clock out. But because they got too antsy, the ball squirted out, hitting the fullback in the right shoulder. The ball pops out. Lake Mary gets a shot. And guess what? You gave Noah the ball with three minutes left, and that is a disaster waiting to happen. And sure enough, dink, 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 touchdown, ball game. And, man, what an awesome effort by Boone High School. I want Boone to get all the credit for this game. Granted, Donnelly called a great game. Coach Scott Perry obviously won. They're advancing. But, man, Andy Johnson went straight old school football, hit him right in the mouth in the trenches. Coach Walters had those guys coached up. And my goodness, they said, beat us in the trenches because we're coming right at you, Lake Mary. I don't care if you're number one in the entire state of Florida. We're coming at you. And they did that, and they executed perfectly. Aiden Mizell, or the Mizell brother, four touchdowns in the air. Sam played a phenomenal. Johnson Yeah, managed Sam to Johnson, well. that was his coming out game, no my doubt about goodness. it. Four touchdown I want to brag. I just want to brag about Boone because I, I can't believe what I saw when I was watching it on NFHSA Network. Shout out to them. They're showing the playoffs. If you don't want to be eleven ninety nine, that's a quick shout out. Subscribe. Hopefully they can sponsor me so I can get some free TV time. So, but anyways, my goodness, Boone High School, great job to them. But Noah Grubbs advances with Lake Mary. Scott Perry better thank his quarterback because my goodness, what an effort he had that night. I tell you what, two great quarterback play. But I I agree with you, Coach Johnson and his coaching staff. What a game plan and way to fight Boone Braves. Perfectly executed. Perfectly. All right, Winter Park. Host Mandarin and Mandarin comes in 29 to 16, takes care of the Wildcats. 22 to nothing, Dan, was your score in the first quarter. After that point, Winter Park was scra- scratching their way back in the game. Interesting enough here, Mandarin beat them all on the ground. They didn't really use their air attack with, with their Florida State quarterback. He used it with all his legs. I believe he had three touchdowns himself. You know, there was a couple of turnovers there. They, for some reason, they have the turnover bug which we saw that in Lake Mary in their first matchup. They have two bad losses on their resume, I believe, with, with the loss to Creekside, who didn't make the playoffs, and then the, the last game against Barch and Trail in a lopsided game. So it's interesting to see how Mandarin really faces a, a solid Lake Mary team. Obviously, the mental game, right? Lake Mary blew them out the first time. They had five turnovers, which I don't expect to happen again, but you never know because what's similar here, what I've watched with Mandarin, is with Mainland. They run the similar type of – they run everything through their quarterback, and we saw what Mainland did with that, or what Lake Mary did with Mainland. They shut it down, just like they did in the first matchup. They forced the guy to fumble three times. They obviously had a couple special teams miscues. Lake Mary was not ready to play, and they also had to make that two-and-a-half-hour drive. Well, guess what, Dan? They got to do it again because the game's at, at Lake Mary. They remember what happened on that field the last time they played. So – it's going to be an interesting – I believe this game is going to be a little closer than the last one because it was lopsided. But I still believe Lake Mary is the better football team here. And I believe that, obviously, the way Noah's playing, that was his worst game statistically. He only threw one touchdown in that game. I believe he's going to throw about three or four in this one. He's only eight touchdowns away from the all-time, all-time passing record in the state of Florida, held by Tucker Israel from Lake Nona. Shout out to him. But, man, what a matchup in this rematch, Dan. I know you're excited about this one. No, this is going to be a big one. And and again, talk about Mandarin. In that first matchup with Lake Mary, they had a big problem with how to defend that offense, number one. Number two is yeah. they had a big problem with penalties. Well, guess what? I got a call from John Santucci on the way home from the Bishop Moore game, and he told me Mandarin, this, this should have been worse. Mandarin had 150-some yards of penalties against Winter Park. So – if Mandarin hasn't gotten better, they're in for a long night against Lake Mary. So Balin has gone dark for a minute. That's going to come up to uh, Seminole takes care of Haggerty, forty-two to three. Seminole moves on, and then Apaka, the Blue Darters, advance twenty-two to thirteen over Evans. That sets up a rematch 
of Seminole Apopka. Balin, we just went through the Seminole Haggerty, the Apopka Evans. We got a rematch of Seminole Apopka. Seminole won this game, I believe it was what, 26 to 3 last time? 21. Yeah, 21 3. Yep. 21 to 3, but it was 7 3 at halftime. That this, is the key, right? in my opinion, you know is the big question mark game, right? Seminole yeah. has had some big games since. Apopka's gotten healthier. This is where I'm going to be Friday night. I think a Popka Seminole is the marquee game outside of Jones Edgewater in Central Florida. I do agree with you, Dan, there. This is what the entire city wants. Obviously, let's not look too far ahead. Lake Mary Seminole would be epic. But I'll tell you what, a Popka, man, when it comes to playoffs, they're, you can never count these guys out. Never, ever, ever. And like you just said, Dan, you set a stat there. Halftime was seven to three. And at that point, when they played each other, Apopka had major injuries. Their starting defensive line was out. Their quarterback was hurt. They had issues offensively and what they were trying to do to figure out how to get through games. Now they're healthy. This is going to come in the trenches. The battle will be won in the trenches. And in my opinion, Apopka is down and dirty. They don't they don't mess around in those trenches when they're healthy. They love that. They love to get in the grind. They love to get, to put their, their, their strength to the test, and they like to get physical. This is going to be a physical game, and the winner of this game, believe it, believe it or not, may come out really banged up for the semi or for the final in the region. This is going to be brutal. This is what football looks like. If you want to see what high school atmosphere in a big-time environment with a culture – both teams are culture based. They believe this stuff. You're going to see a packed house. We talked about that Lake Mary uh, Seminole game with a packed house. This is Lake Mary Apopka. This is dip, this is this is like bragging rights to the hood. This is like, Seminole we're, Apopka. We're yeah, Seminole. That's what I'm saying. Like Seminole Apopka. This is like you. We're we're talking years from now. They're going to talk about games like this. Like bragging rights in the youth football leagues like but, but, but don't matters. they always don't they always yeah. hasn't it always come down to the playoffs where you got Seminole Apopka whether Apopka's at Seminole Apopka steals one Seminole a few years ago with Timmy McLean they stole it from Apopka this is always that game that you don't have to ask them to get ready for both teams are ready for this game Man. now we know Seminole Lake Mary is always the game they got circled but at the end of the day Apopka Seminole is always huge you can never overlook a team like Apopka. I'll say that. And I know talking to Cal Coach Calhoun a couple times this week, he is ready. He is treating this game like it is the, the Super Bowl or the or the state championship because he knows if he overlooks a team like Apopka, it's night-night. Your season is done. You are in the offseason starting Saturday morning. So you do not want that to happen, especially with the season Seminoles having Apopka. What a story this will be. I mean – I, all I can think about is all the injuries and the losses. But let's not get fooled here. Apopka is 8-3. and three. They're not a bad football team. They're 8-3, and three, Dan. They're not bad at all. And we, and I, for some reason, I, I keep forgetting that. I always just go back to, the, obviously, the Lake Mary blowout, the lopsided loss with Seminole, the weird games against Evans where they're losing, come back to fight and a win, right? But they're 8-3. and three. They're winning games. That's what matters. And that's what's going to go into this game Friday night. Do not sleep on a Popka. This is the best game other than Jones Edgewater. You will be there, and I cannot wait to get these updates because I'm telling you what, if you give a healthy Apopka team a 7-3 lead or deficit a half, you might come away with that big L, Seminole. So you better wake up because this is, this is high school football and this is playoffs. All right, let's move on to 4M Region 2. This is it. Riverview beats Sumner. 33 to 28 to move on. Palm Harbor University loses to Durant, 33 to nothing. Tampa Plant. Now, Tampa Plant is the one we need to keep an eye on. They beat Plant City 31 to 27. That was much closer, we thought. Plant moves on. But Dr. Phillips, Dr. Phillips, Balin. Takes out Olympia 17 to 15. What a game. I absolutely love it. You know why? Because everybody was on this Olympia train with 13 transfers 
Now, granted, great football team, phenomenal football team. Nobody gave Dr. Phillips a chance in this football game. Absolutely. I don't care. Even some of the Dr. Phillips coaches, if they were serious, off the record, would have said, ooh, we got a tough one Friday night. And they came away and shut down the paper champions and sent them home packing in the first round. I was shocked. I'm the only one, Dan, last week that said Olympia was going to win this game. You thought that Dr. Phillips might have an opportunity, and your boy that we brought on said they're losing to Dr. Phillips. I was like, no way possible. Oh, my goodness. Did they shake some feathers in that 4M Region 2 district? And I believe, Dan, Dr. Phillips is going to beat Plant, and they're going to the Elite Eight, and they have a chance to beat last year's Koei team. What should I tell you? Oh, my goodness. Would that be like, wow. Dr. Phillips and Ronnie Wells leads this team to a regional final and potential final four, Dan. What are your thoughts, buddy? No, listen, I, first of all, coach, coach Gabe, uh, you know, congratulations to the Titans. They had an outstanding season. Uh, we got to see a lot of great players play football, right? Um, we saw, we were at the Olympia, Dr. Phillips in round one, and we've said it all year long, right? It's tough to beat a team twice. And we've got some matchups here that again, it's tough to beat a team twice. And it takes a little bit more preparation. It has to take a lot more self-awareness and a whole bunch of self-discipline. And I think that's going to come down to it. You know, a lot of these, a lot of these matchups we're seeing right now, it comes down to discipline and big plays. That's going to be the difference. Who makes the big plays and who's going to come out disciplined? That is going to be the key. But, you know, Balin, we've got so much football going on right now. It's playoff time. It's win or go home. And that's why we love this time of year. Dan, you said it best, baby. And uh, you know what? Your last speech that you gave week 11 to all those seniors, well, guess what? Those that are still remaining in the playoffs, the message remains the same. Make sure you take it all in, enjoy every single second, because you never know when it's your last time to put those pads on. And guess what, Dan? For some of these guys, they're not putting those pads away because we have the Cure All-Star game, baby. We're still picking players to play in this thing, and we're still got other underclassmen All-Star games, and we're still advertising. So guess what, guys? Even if you lose, you're not done playing high school football, baby. Get ready because December is All Star Month, so let's go. Oh, baby. dude, we're we're only a few weeks away, and I can tell you right now, the rest of the invites are going to be floating out here next week. We're finalizing the rosters, all three games: Seminole, Volusia, Flagler, Orange County game, Lake Osceola. The Cure All Star game is the epitome in Central Florida, and this is what it's all about. Now, here's going to be some other things too, Balin. That's going to be fun. The MVPs from each game are going to be recognized at the Cure Bowl on December 16th, live on ABC. It's going to be huge. Whoa. We're not you playing around. Bowl, you talking about the college bowl game? At the college game. Every one of these kids is going to have tickets to the Cure Bowl, and the MVPs are going to be recognized at the end of the first quarter. It's going to be huge. Wow. And guess what? All their coaching staff's going to be there. You would also start MVP. You never know, man. Those opportunities come at weird times. So you might want to put on a show for your last time wearing that helmet. But – your high school season is not done for some of you all-stars, but for, for 90% of you, enjoy every second, man, because high school, there's nothing like it, Dan. There's nothing like it. Yeah, so if you ain't got an offer yet, get ready, because you're going to get a big stage opportunity to, to show your stuff. And with that, with the recruiting fair and everything that's going on, we got Dwight Thomas coming down from Jacksonville in February. We got almost 80 schools coming in Division Two and Division Three looking for players. There's so much going on, and that's what we do. Well, Balin, that is it, man. We've got to get ready for these games on Friday night. Closing thoughts? I love uh, I love everything that's happening right now in Central Florida. We will have a representation of a team in uh, in the state championship, and I believe it's going to be four of them. Just keep on winning, guys. Enjoy your time. All right. For Balin Trujillo, I'm Dan LaForest. We may not be right, but I know we ain't wrong. See you next week.